Hey folks, welcome into the Domestic Game Podcast. Michael Lafayette from Pro Football Ireland here. Thanks for your continued support of this podcast. I have to say, I am honestly delighted to see how Cali and Joe and the whole team are getting on. And I want to wish this opportunity to, I want to take this opportunity, sorry, to wish the Wolfhounds the very, very best on Saturday against Turkey in MTU Stadium in Cork. You can get your tickets in the bio now, or if you're on our social media pages, just search Irish Wolfhounds or search at NFL Ireland for Pro Football Ireland or the domestic game for links to tickets. It's a really important one for the local game, the domestic game, and that is because we have the game against Turkey and we also have the European Flag Football Championships taking place in Limerick in the third week of the month and also then the college game taking place at the end of the month. But the high school game is taking place the day before that. So enjoy this podcast. Joe speaks to a number of different guests. I will chat to you soon. Uh, joining me now are two captains of the Irish Wolfhound senior kid team uh, in preparation for this Saturday's game against the Turkish national team. Joining me right now are Mark Davidson and Martin Mulray. Guys, how are we doing? How are we doing? Hi, Julia. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Being in the hassle, guys. Um, listen, it, it's been a bit of a time since the last uh, Irish national home game. Um, am I right in saying it was back in 20, was it 2017, 2018, the Belgium game? 2018, yeah. 2018, yeah. It's been a long, long time. Long, long time. So look, it's been five years since we've had one. Uh, I think the community is really, really, really looking forward to this game this Saturday. Um, let's kind of backtrack a bit before we talk about this Saturday. Obviously, the result, the most recent result for the national team was the trip to Spain. Uh, it was a, lo- a loss, unfortunately. Um, take us through that game, obviously. How... What, were, what was it like making adjustments? Obviously, we saw on when we were watching the game live that they're a very quick team. Um, is there anything that maybe Coach O'Sullivan has picked up um, that we've, you know, kind of bringing forward into this into this game this Saturday? You want to take it, Mark? I'll, I'll, I'll go first, yeah. Um, there you go. From an offensive point of view, yeah, I think we've got a lot to build on. Um, that game, we just... Just weren't quite firing at all cylinders. Um, we did move the ball pretty well. We we got we got close a couple of times to the end zone. We just couldn't quite convert. Um, so yeah, I think uh, Kieran and Andy, I think they've been doing a lot, not an awful lot of work behind the scenes. Um, just trying to get our offense dialed in. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm hopefully I don't want to say too much, but I hope I expect them big things. Um, yeah, so we we yeah, we moved the ball really well, ran it well, um, threw it really well too. Uh, we just need to like dial in a little bit extra and execute um, that extra sort of 20, 30 percent that we were missing. Um, and then I think we'll actually maybe surprise a few people against Turkey. So yeah, I did. Nadeem did, did pretty well, right? <laughs> I like um, Spain threw a bunch of things different that we weren't ready for, but we just adjusted mid game. I think in when you're traveling to any country for any game, it brings a lot of kind of obstacles and. I think the night before, in late, settling around, kind of, I think it, all the guys did well to kind of get ready for the game and just kind of lock it out. Um, in terms of getting ready for the game, what we brought to the field, I think the guys were up for it. I think uh, Spain, like you said, were really quick. They're technical as well. They're just coming off the end of their season with the uh, Barcelona Dragons. A lot of their guys were on that team. So same scheme. So, like, they kind of fit right into it. Um I thought like once we got on the field, it was easy to take a breath and just be like, all right, this has come back to us. We have a plan. And uh, just over the course of the game, I think the one thing that was surprising that didn't come across on tape as much for us against Spain was their speed um, on and their skills positions. They had some like track star speed out there, but like our schemes were developed to kind of handle that and kind of cage that in. And I uh, just like, a few plays here and there, like uh the way that fake field goal touchdown and a couple long balls and it's there, like total offense. I think they had just under 200 yards, which like yeah. going into a good game at the end, you'll take that any day of the week, you know? Yeah. 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 You, me, sorry, firehead, Mark. Firehead. No, sorry. I, I, was just gonna, I think we actually matched up really well against a team that has a lot of guys that were playing, playing semi-pro football. Um, yeah, all those Barcelona Dragons players. And I think actually, in, in in the end of the day, we were equally as physical. Maybe not quite as fast, but we were definitely um, definitely weren't out of our league. And um, I think that's that's something that we've definitely proved. 
Yeah. Um, you made a great point there, um, Marty, about the the time between the domestic sort of season finishing in Spain and then them rolling straight into a, a national team game. Do you think that the preparation for this game has been helped by how close it is to uh, how how recently we've wrapped up the season? Obviously, you're, you know, teams making playoffs like, for that finishing up. Was it July 16th with the Shamrock Bowl? I think. Yeah, like, um, like with it being so close, like the, the especially the Rebels, lads, UCD lads, like um, tough semifinals going right into a final. They're carrying a few knocks in there, but like, give it a month and like you heal up nicely. But uh, when it comes to the Barcelona team, like those guys are one unit on a team where even though our season just ended, we got loads of guys from across the league, you know? Um, so it's just coming together, learning a new system for some guys, some guys from the previous years kind of falling into it a bit quicker because they had a few uh, games with it. But um, it's a bit different that way. But, like, um, you know, it, it's come together real well in camp with guys picking it up. So, like, um, it does help physically. Your body has that kind of toughness. Um, the calluses are there, ready to kind of grind and bang again. But like um, in terms of scheme wise, you're still fitting a system, you know. Yeah. So, Mark, how, how are you feeling coming up again off the off the domestic season finishing so so recently? Yeah, well, uh, my season, Marty season, a, a bit a little bit yeah. earlier than we would have liked, but yeah, I just definitely guys carrying carrying notes. I don't think anyone's going to let that get in the way, and um, everyone's going to. Squeeze that little bit more out of their body for this for this sort of last game of the of the season. Um, yeah, guys are recovering well. They're doing all the prep work that they need to do. Everyone's taking it easy uh, this week, especially. Um, so yeah, no, like I think everyone's going to be sort of tuned in from the season ending. So recently, we were having the game in October, it was letting guys have a couple of months without football. So everyone having football sort of fresh in their heads, really, really helping. Yeah, the, the camp of the last few weeks have been real competitive, real physical. Yeah. It's good to hear, especially, you know, um, with how the games were going, say, pre-COVID, picking up two wins against Belgium. Um, you know, there, it's good to see that there's still that sort of excitement and, and you know, drive and, and passion to, to really kick on with a result here this weekend. Um, I suppose we'll wrap it up with, um, has, has there been any sort of key message or, or tone uh, set by Coach O'Sullivan and the rest of the coaching staff coming into this weekend? Is there any... Any particular mantra they're going by, or or uh, what's the so what's the message going to, to the rest of the team? Like, just what I see is like the message is we're building something, like you said before, like with the COVID breaking up to two Belgium games, we had great momentum with the good camps, with long camps, we had two games in relatively short span. Like the momentum was there. So what it is now is just that building off the Spain game, having our own season, kind of building momentum, and like getting into the European divisions, making a name for ourselves, like putting a stamp that we are someone that teams do want to play because we are going to put it to you. No matter what your level are, we are going to come. We're going to be prepared. We're going to definitely be physical. And uh, we're going to surprise people who think like lower tier teams in the rankings right now don't have it. But like there are talent coming from Ireland that people would be very surprised about. So um, I think the message now is like we have it. We just got to do it. Yeah, that's exactly right, Marty. The 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 difference level of the World Cup or Team Ireland from 2015 to now is it's night and day. Um, the the tier of athlete that you have coming on up, you know, Marty and I are two sort of older old hats now. Um, but I still got it. Um, yeah, the guys the guys are just crazy, crazy athletes, and I think there's no doubt about how athletic we are as a team. We just need to dial it in a little bit more and execute really so the sort of the message of the day, at least on offense, is just like, execute um, and just get get those plays on off right. And um, guys have been together now for yeah a couple of years, a few additions, and um, throughout the years. But yeah, it seems sort of core core of players. And Marty says we're really building something, and yeah, it's uh, it's going to be exciting. Very tough, guys. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the game now. Um, I'll be down there myself. Uh, hopefully, I think I'm I might be commentating. Still have to nail that down as to whether I'm I'm up to it or not. But uh, my fingers crossed. You can't get rid of me. Can't get rid of me. I'll be attached somehow. Uh, guys, thanks so much for joining me. Um, don't forget, guys, you can get your tickets uh, for the Irish Wolfhounds versus Turkish national team game uh, this Saturday at MTU Stadium in Cork. Uh, kickoff is at 3 o'clock, and you can get your tickets get down there. 
Get you down come there. support us. Get down there. There's no reason not to be there. That's it. Like turkey Home game made the not the the time, you know? Yeah, we better not see more turkey fans than Irish fans. Get down there. Bring friends. It's going to be a good day. There's going to be food vans. There's going to be a spectacle. We're going to put a show on the ground. You're going to see some banging. It's going to be great. Get down there. See a good game. Absolutely. Tickets in the AFI socials, guys. Thank you so much, guys, for, for joining me here today. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, joining me now are the captains of the Irish Wolfhounds women's flag football team uh, entering the uh, European Championships this August. Uh, joining me is Jenny Cavanagh and Helen Smith. Guys, how are we? All good. good. Thank you. Good. Uh, first off, I suppose, how is um, how is everything coming together? Uh, you know, how are we feeling ourselves and how are we feeling about the team? You know, competitions in two weeks. I'm sure we're all uh, all pretty excited. Yeah, it's going really well. Um the progress that we can be like throughout each session is insane and um, we're like a totally different team by the end so yeah everyone's been putting the work in and yeah we're just really excited to see what we can do oh yeah i mean i was actually thinking the exact same thing there helen but uh like i feel i feel pretty ready now and that we we've got our, our stuff together but actually the fact that we even have two weeks, I think it's going to be different again in two weeks' time. Yeah. We just keep getting even better every single camp, yeah. Yeah, we've got two more sessions, so I think they'll make a big difference. Mm -hmm. How does it feel knowing that, you know, this is going to be the first women's team that Ireland has put forward into a tournament as big as this? Is there, um, uh, have you kind of gotten over the nerves of that or has that even kind of hit you yet? Is it still kind of, is it coming in, in spurts or is it all kind of passed you by now? Um, I, I don't think the nerves for me don't come with being the first women's team because I would say like excitement is the bigger emotion for like that fact and um, the nerves for me just comes with I suppose lack of experience in the situation so um, just knowing that the first game is going to tell us a lot and we're going to have to get through that at the start and then kind of know what nearly to expect like I'd say the first five minutes are going to be the hardest five minutes of the entire tournament nearly do you know yeah. um, so but Feeling like feeling good, like definitely feeling really excited, uh, but it's certainly nervous. I'd say <laughs> you're the same, right? Yeah, <laughs> definitely nervous, but like I don't think I'll ever get over that we are going to be the first ones to ever do this. Like, yeah, that's just so cool that we can actually be a part of that, and yeah, it's just really exciting. Yeah, there should be a lot of um, a lot of pride, obviously, with with how you guys have done. Obviously, you guys have been playing kid or pay, playing uh, with teams there for a couple of years. And, you know, to, especially the two of you to see is in this kind of situation, it's, it's, it's really cool, you know, cause you guys have done, uh, you know, a lot of work in obviously Helen, you do, you do stuff for the FI board as well. And, and Jenny, you've been around like, it, it's, it's cool to see you guys involved in something as big as this. So I hope that, uh, hope people are as excited for you as some of us around the team are. So, um, obviously some of things to be fair. Some of the uh, pools have changed. I know there was a, a bit of a mm. kerfuffle yeah. over the last couple uh, days to try and get these groups sorted, but they did eventually get sorted. So um, I think it's, it's Austria, Finland, Germany. Is there two more? I think Spain and Switzerland are the last two teams in yeah. the group. Spain and Switzerland, yeah. yeah. Um, how much prep or um, how much, I suppose, film have you been able to, to get on these teams? Obviously, I know, again, as I said, some of these teams have changed kind of last minute, but... Um, have the coaches been able to get some of that to you and, you know, get a bit more prepared for who, like the actual people you're going to be playing against? Yeah, um, coaches have been working away in the background and I think now that the groups are definite and um, they're really going to get stuck in um, and they're always sending in like clips and videos and stuff of other teams, even just to see flag being played at that level, even if they're not the people that we're playing against is still so useful um but yeah it's good to know who we're definitely playing on we can really focus in on them yeah um just one thing here as well on the coaching aspect of this obviously again you guys are leaders on the field for the for the um for the players on the field but the likes of alan barnwell head coach and obviously i i know james harkin through um through the hurricanes 
Like, how have you found the level of coaching from club level to, to national level? Obviously, there will be a bit of a step up. You're getting, you know, the the, the best of, of who we have to offer. But what has, has there been a massive jump that you've realized? Or is it more of a, you know, kind of everybody's involved, you know, players are helping players and coaches are helping players. It's all kind of one, um, you know, everybody's helping each other kind of thing. Yeah, I suppose, um, I think what I've noticed the most is I have only like ever really had the same coaches, you know, they haven't changed much. So it's like difference in coaching styles would be the biggest thing I would say. Um, and just getting like, even just getting to know your coach is asking of you for the team straight away. Like kind of even the communication styles can be different. Um, but no, the coaching has been great. Like I find the coaches have been, they've been really good at like attuning their methods of doing things to the team and to what like we need so like you'll see from like one session to the next that actually it's like even gotten better again because based on how we responded the next time but I certainly think that you know I'd say Helen has the same opinion that there's been a lot of focus put on us being leaders there and like um we're kind of happy to take on that role so that again for me anyway I probably not for Helen now she's the QB obviously in Captain Your Club but uh, that's different for me as well and um, so that side of it like I've been happy to take on kind of that role and um, so that's been nice and I think they've been really good at well I find any way at um, mentoring us through that like what that looks like do you know yeah um, so, so Helen yourself then coming into this as quarterback of the first sort of national team that we put forward through uh, women's, women's games how have you found the, the um experience that you've gotten playing in the mixed league obviously we had the tournaments there that were ran in april may and june but now that the league has, has taken you know a couple of game days have, have happened now uh, through july how have you how have you helped the, or how have you found that that experience there has helped uh, in preparation for august um it's been really good um obviously training is just not quite at the same intensity and the same levels when when you're in a game situation so it definitely like made me realize I need need to step up my game a bit um and just everyone's obviously so much more competitive and would like kill to get the ball so um yeah I definitely have learned a lot of those last weeks um I think we even noticed on that game day Jenny where it was the all the girls down like everyone just stepped up their game so much so it's really mm -hmm. that we all have that in us and that we can really step up when we need to yeah definitely that was actually um i was in there that that's been brought up but that was a really cool thing to actually see but i don't like that was something that we've never seen before like an all women's setup you know all women you know, a women's team versus a women's team i don't think i don't think anyway it ever happened uh, in our you know, to, to kind of get that and have eyes on on the day watching i think i think that was cool to obviously for the um for the sort of celebration of it yeah it's great but i think on a sort of more mi you know micro detail that like it helps you guys get used to having eyes on you because very rarely in flag games do we get many people spectate and watch mm -hmm. you know so i think that was actually a pretty cool thing to get you used to having eyes on you before this tournament because um you know there will probably be a good few people down watching um you know, it is an open event, so hopefully there'll be a lot of people there watching, and hopefully you get to to shine uh, when the spotlight's on you. Uh, just, I suppose, one more question for both of you. Um, obviously, there's a lot of people who are kind of newer to the sport. Um, on on the women's team, are there any players that you've noticed in training who have really taken a step up uh, since the team has been formed, and maybe a player each that. You know, maybe people aren't aware of, or you think maybe people should be coming into this tournament. You know, someone that you see taking a big step up and being a big kind of part of this team going forward into the tournament. Um, yeah. So I guess I'll go first on why the player I think he was like really stepped up, and uh, for me is Roberta. Um, she she came in like now when I say new to the sport she's been watching it so I never think that makes you entirely new you know and obviously been watching Randall and that but um, she like I can't get over the ticket is different some of her roots now are like the best on the team and I'm just going where but she's just been out every evening and um, she says she goes out, goes out at lunchtime when she can't and gets, gets like the balls thrown into her so 
I think she's put in a lot of work and it shows for sure. Like she got two picks on Saturday, uh, or the last training, sorry, two weeks ago was it, um, on defense. So we were like, where does a replay defense before? But she's just been working in the background. Like it was crazy. Um, so definitely her for me on my most improved. The one to watch out, I, it's hard to know who people maybe don't know because I'm sure in the different leagues they do. But I probably, like, you know, I would say everyone probably knows the, the standard Kelly's app, but for me, Haley, yeah. I think Haley is I really, a little yeah. bit, yeah, was that what you were thinking? Yeah. She's probably a bit quieter, but like, she's going to be offense and defense killing it. Like, she's yeah. just, she, she executes things so well. When you look back at, she's someone that I would kind of like on defense anyway, like, I know she's going to do her job correctly. So I don't even need to worry about her. And I'm just thinking, okay, you know, you know, so. <laughs> She's just one of those players. Yeah, she's uh, she's safe hands as well. So I think she's going to be one yeah. to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I think another one is Abby as well. Um, yeah. She pretty much only played defense at her club, but she's just took to offense like and such a natural. And she is so fast, <laughs> so fast. So she's really good playing both ways as well. And I know she's been working away on her roots and everything. And it's really starting to show. Yeah. Yeah. There's honestly so many though because no, no, no. But literally everyone yet yeah. and we haven't even yeah like you've been over in the states training yeah. and she was in San Diego and she was with the team there so I can't wait to see what she comes back like. <laughs> That's it. Like you know when we've been training ourselves and doing our own drills, you know we'll look over anytime that we're at the back of a at back of a line or whatever. I'll look over have a have a look at a few reps and I'll be like, oh geez, that was a that was a snag and a half or you know looking at Helen throwing balls. It's like. You know, there, it's it. There's a lot of, I think, a lot of people who may that maybe aren't in the spotlight, or you know, that would too many people would be aware of them. But I'm sure that by the end of of this tournament, that there'll definitely be a lot of clubs looking. Jesus, okay, I didn't realize that she could do this. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's that's the great thing about this tournament. It's really put a focus on the women's side side of this game and the amount of development that can be done when the proper effort is 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 put into coaching. Mm-hmm. I think some teams have maybe. Um, not intentionally, but you know, maybe neglected that side of the, that side of things for a little bit. But you know, like you guys have, have proven that there's just you know so much potential in in women's football that you know hopefully now it takes off after this tournament because the the team that we're putting forward I think is really strong. So uh, we'll wrap it up there, guys. Yeah, uh, thanks, everyone, for for uh, coming on. I uh, really do appreciate it. I'll let you get back to the prep for two weeks time because I'm sure it's really starting to ramp up now so uh, I'll let you guys get going thank you so much for joining guys thanks Joe thanks so much okay and uh, joining me next are the captains of the men's Wolfhounds flag football team Uh, joining me is Ray Burke and John Luke Tubberish guys how are we today not too bad, thanks. Too bad. Uh, so listen, these uh, the tournaments in two weeks uh, at the time of recording, hopefully at the time of release as well. Um, down in Limerick, uh, 18th to the 20th of August. Uh, should be a great weekend. There's tons of teams there uh, from all over Europe coming down. Men's and women's games. Um, just talk to me, I suppose, Tupper, I'll go to yourself first. Um, uh, the development of the squad over the last year or so. Like just how things have come on, especially with the flag season having ended it around October or early November last year. Just how training has picked up and and how the squad has come together. Yes, we've been meeting up for camps obviously regularly since May was it May twenty two was our first camp maybe. And I know we've seen a lot of people come and go between then, but like the people who have made it through now to the end, they've come on leaps and bounds since. Like I don't even personally myself, the the coaching we're getting is top quality. Like so, I feel from the first day up in um, was that Gorman Town was it? I think um, I think it's it's night and day the difference between what we were that day to what where we are now. Um, I f- just think that the the coaching we're getting, like I said, is top notch. And um, I do I think at this stage now, two weeks out, like I, I don't think we could be in any better place to to go start playing some games. And yourself, Ray, the just again as as yourselves as captains, how do you feel that the leadership? Obviously, a big thing for you guys uh, leading a twelve-man squad into a championship, but 
Um, do you feel that there's good sort of equity between, you know, how much you guys are getting to input at training uh, compared to coaches? Like, is it, what's the sort of dynamic there that you can maybe shed some light on onto what these camps have been like for the flag team? Yeah, I, th- I think the attitude of the coaches has been very good. As uh, John Luke said there, the coaching has been fantastic, but there's also an openness to uh, players bringing their experience, what they find works, what they've had connections with other players before working on. So they're very open to um, input as long as obviously it's justified, makes sense. So I think the the relationship between all players and, and especially uh, myself and John Luke with coaches has been great. The tournaments then, obviously, we have, uh, by the time this gets out, uh, we'll, we'll have uh, the pools released and, and the schedules released. We have um, it's Austria, Denmark, and Finland. And, or Sorry, not Austria, sorry. Uh, it's Italy, Denmark, uh, Switzerland, and Finland uh, in our group. So have you got to watch much tape on them? Obviously, Italy are world champions. They they won the, uh, the championship at the World Games there last year in America, but... Uh, especially for the for the other teams in that group, uh, has there been much shared on on what their play is like? Any any key players or what you're seeing there? Yeah, we, we've our last camp we went we ran through some footage from some of the other and our our uh, the teams in our group we ran through footage on, on their I wouldn't I wouldn't say recent games but their recent tournaments. Um, so we we know how some teams like to play. Um, I know obviously there, there are some teams who are brand new to this and um, there's like some teams that are going into their first tournament where and there's some teams who are like set established Italy, Denmark those type teams but uh, like well, personally anyway I'm, I'm glad we have Italy in our group you know you get to go up against the best um, look at, looking at their table well, like, um, I know we're not afraid of any team going into this either you know we, we, we've seen the tape and we know what we have to do we know their strengths their weaknesses we know our strengths and weaknesses so um yes we've the, I, t- I feel like we have bases covered as far as it goes and um, when it comes to tape on the other teams and how we're prepared with the amount of flag football experience uh on this squad as well I, I, it is obviously you know with me having been around the, the squad for close to a year it's been great watching everybody really really like push themselves at training as well, um. The like again with with Peter Locker and their quarterback and and yourself Ray like there's there's a good mix I think of, of vets nearly in the flag football scene and then guys who are newer like yourself Tupper you've been playing is it since just before COVID or just after, yeah. But it's like that. It's a it's a great mix I think of of guys who are, like just, just pure athletes who are getting taught not only by really good coaches but like vets who are there to, to lead them on and push them even further. I think it's a, it's a really, really talented squad. Obviously, you know, there's been a couple of things said about the size of the squad, it, it, but that's just an IFAF thing. We can only bring 12, but it is a really, really good 12. And I think when you get down to those those some sort of numbers, it, it is hard. Like there's loads of lads there who in any other situation would have made a squad, you know, if it was a 15 man or 17, like there's a couple of guys missing, but this 12 man roster is really really serious and I don't think there is there was a wrong move made it is I think the best 12 that we could possibly put out there so I'm personally really excited to see how things go uh, in Limerick uh, it should be a good time obviously there's going to be games Friday, Saturday and Sunday um, hopefully we're involved in all three games I'm sure you guys or in all three days I'm sure you guys are uh, planning on the same um, is there any game obviously Italy is probably the, the main one you said there Tubert. Uh Ray yourself is there a game that you're looking forward to the most there in that pool uh, probably probably the Italian game as well pure, and, the, and the game against the Danish just purely it's going to be amazing to compete team to that kind of level see exactly how they're playing see their see their um, players actual technique and what scheme they're using, how we're being able to dominate these other teams. So it's going to be a learning experience. Yeah. I think it's, it's the beauty of this as well. Like, very rarely do you get to compete on a stage as big as this. And then to see the likes of, again, likes of Italy, likes of Denmark coming over. And, you know, it's going to be 
it's this sort of stuff that drives the game forward domestically as well. Um, so I, yeah, I, I just think it's it's a great thing that we've been able to bring this tournament here, and fingers crossed it ends up being a good weekend. Uh, guys, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, we really appreciate the time that you've been able to give us here. Uh, obviously, I'm sure the prep has been really ramping up now these two weeks before the tournament. So, uh, you know, fingers crossed we can we can get some results. And um, looking forward to seeing what you can do there out in the field. And for my final guest of this podcast, we have the head coach of the Irish Wolfhounds Under 20s program, uh, Coach Alan Lamazny. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, Joe. Thanks. Thanks for uh, having me on. I'd say a couple of weeks away now from the uh, Gift Ireland series. Obviously, we've got, uh, I think it's at three games that day. There's six, five teams coming over. Uh, you've got NFL Academy, you've got a couple uh, high school teams coming over, and then obviously yourselves taking part. Um, so, how's the prep been? Obviously, with, with uh, a couple of weeks away now, I'm sure things are ramping up and a couple training sessions left. How's the how's the jo- the squad gelled together since uh, since it formed? Uh, really good, actually. The the, um, the the difference between the first session and even last last weekend is huge. Um, you know, guys are after coming in there and you know they're, they're getting an idea of what we want and, and what we want to achieve with it. So, um, no, it has been great. Uh, we've we've a good squad. Um, we've guys from all over the country. And um, you know they're gelling well. They're uh, they're you know they're all clicking together on offense and defense, special teams, and you know we're looking forward to the game now in three weeks. That's it, and it it does seem to be a good time to do it. Obviously, last year was a bit hard with how teams you know we didn't know what what teams would be like with the youth programs only just coming out of COVID. But um, obviously the the league there started back last year there and. Coming into this year, then you've got guys who would have graduated into senior programs. Obviously, you're you're again being an admiral yourself. You know all about your QB. Uh, you've got um, Connor. Is it Hoskins for the uh, running back? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. you've got guys like them. Like how, how, roughly, uh, how many of the of the squad that you formed there would have gotten senior reps there in 2023? Uh, in and around the third, maybe maybe a bit more, but around the third of them have have played uh, their first season of. Of, of senior football so you know you've got Connor uh, you've got Jake you've got uh, Dylan Coyle from the from the Vipers you've got Robert Maher from the Panthers and um, you know there's, there's, there's a good few there's a good few there that have played you know so it, it's great that you know they're getting a, an idea of what a living aside football is like you know and that they, they've had a taste of that so you know now it's just a matter of tidying the lads that have only played eight aside in to bring them along so Having guys that have played eleven side has been a great help that way because you know they're able to help each other as well as the coaches. You know, deal, you know, trying to get them up to speed as well. That's yeah. I was going to kind of lead into that with the experience that some of those guys would have had playing eleven aside and playing senior ball in Ireland. Um, there's obviously been some good leadership there, and you know, amongst the players themselves, trying to bring each other along and helping out. You know, there is a big difference between eight or nine aside football compared to eleven aside. So, um, it's been good. Good to see that the the yeah thing is in jail yeah. to push each other along and learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they've been very good. Like you know, the, those lads that have played eleven have, have really stepped up now, and, and you know they've helped the guys along. Um, especially I think the the two linemen groups. You, you know, you you uh, you know Sam Dylan Robert. Uh, they've all been you know they've been great leaders now for to to show you know to help guys along because a few of the guys obviously you know anyone that played the eighth type football especially on the line you know. The max lineman you have, and usually in, in the eighth side, it, it's just the, the center and, and two guards. Like so, um, you know, trying to get used to a five man line on the offense is, is taking a bit of, a bit of practice. Um, apart from that, I mean, receivers wise, it's a similar. I mean, obviously, yes, you have a couple of extra ones, but like again, it's not a huge deal. A running back again, similar. And uh, I suppose the only other, you know, the only other thing then is obviously your 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 quarterback is uh, a bit more people to account for. You know, it's it's not look, it is a huge jump, but it's not a huge jump once once they get they get into it and get, get cracking, you know. So they've been listen, they've been very good. They they've picked up all the playbook stuff and um, you know, and practices the last practice there was very efficient. Uh, especially in you know, and we, we did a lot of offense stuff now the last day. And um the offense is quite efficient. There was there was a lot of uh, uh, a lot of good reps, you know, not not too many mistakes, which is what you want to see just coming up through a game. That's it. Yeah. Is there any um, obviously without 
trying to single too many people out. Um, is there any names maybe that we're not aware of, or say the the wider AFI community wouldn't be too uh, aware of? Maybe are they just um, say junior players, or have they played a bit of senior, but maybe haven't gotten that much recognition just yet? Is there anybody basically flying under the radar that we could watch out for at the end of August? Um, yeah, look, I mean, to be honest, I mean, I I don't think that realistically, uh, even of the group that has played eleven aside, not many of them are starters. Because you know, you know, there's not a huge pile of lads come straight in and start in in the in the, in the top division. Um, I know there's a, a couple of our lads are 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 playing. Um, like again, the uh, Robert Maher from the Panthers, uh, Connor Oscar ten for Panthers, they're both starting. Um, Jay Kennedy has played a couple of games for us this year. Um, after that, uh, Jack Price, uh, or one of our cornerbacks, like he said, uh, he played for Trinity this year. Um, Connor Kelly played for Limerick. Um, I just can't take no loss about me who has been playing, you know, that that you may be. Uh, Jason Murphy on the offensive line, I think, would be uh, would be a guy that's going to make a bit of an impact. Uh, we've got a couple of linebackers from the from the um, from the Knights there. You've got uh, you've got Ben Smith, uh, you've got Max Scott, and actually you have Matthew McQuiston. They're, they're going to, I think, they're going to make a big impact as well. You know, then, listen, there's guys like Dylan, Dylan Kyle from the Vipers has been, has been huge for us as well. Uh, you know, uh, I think a lot, a lot of these guys are going to make an name for themselves over the next, the next few months uh, at the, at the under 19 level. That's it. And uh, what are we talking about? Obviously, um, the, say, future of the program. Obviously, this is the first under 20s game that we've had in, say, five years, I think. Um, 2018 would have been the last time. I think that was a USA elite team that um, we played. Um, is there many... First, first of all, do you, do you know if there's anything in the works? You don't have to say anything or announce anything just yet. Yeah, was, yeah, there, there is... Uh, not breaking any news here yet. Okay. No, no, look, there is there is a few games being organised or play already over between, you know, in the next 12 months we're open to play, you know, uh, uh, at least two to three games with the lads to try and, you know, get them to a point where getting them regular football so yeah there's still a lot of talk but I'm at the moment check um, I suppose finally with obviously your opponents uh, Community Sk- School of uh, Naples from Florida um, has there been much communication maybe even from the rest of the teams that are coming over has there been much communication between teams or has that kind of been in the dark a bit or have you been you know sharing tape or, or even just talking to each other um, before um, over yeah, no, uh, there hasn't been uh, much communication there coming from the the, the other side. Uh, look, I mean, no, no one has reached out to us. Um, we're just we're just doing our own thing. I suppose. Look, there isn't any film on us because we haven't played. So, you know, um, you know, I presume when you know when they get here, we will have the, you know, probably have some communication then. But uh, look, I think we, you know because it's the, the the gift thing is is I suppose it's like a package deal for both guys. You know, they're probably just doing their own thing and, and look, they don't, you know, they don't probably need to communicate with anyone over here because, you know, it's all set up and they just get on the plane and they arrive over here and it's just all ready to go. So, yeah. uh, no, I to be honest, I haven't, uh, we haven't had any communication with anyone, I don't think. Uh, you know, look, as I said, maybe when they come over, we might have some more communication then maybe. Mm. Yeah, fingers crossed. I think it, it's good these events that they... um uh, you know, we get this big influx of of knowledge, and you know these coaches who have been working with these players in their high schools. They have been around the sport for years, and I think anything that they can, you know, we can learn from them, and you know maybe they can learn from us too. Some things that you maybe be introducing to to offense and defense that they may have never seen before, or you know different little sort of little tips and tricks that maybe again a- any game of football can enlighten you to any sort of style. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Look, I mean, look, they're suddenly, I mean, look. They, they, these guys are, are you know, they did obviously be playing, you know, regular games every year, you know, in their in their own leagues and whatever. So I look they're they're well used to it. I mean, you know, by all means if if, if they you know, I, I have no I have no issue with you know, if, if they wanted to do some sort of combined practice or something like that, I wouldn't have an issue with that. Um in fact I think it would be great if when they do come over if we could organise something with them that we could, you know, Share practices with with even some of our AFI teams. I mean, you know that type of thing. You'd learn an, you'd learn an awful lot. But um, again, you know, as I said, look, that's all down to 
to Patrick Steenberg and, and, and the gift club to, to try and, you know, come up with some sort of a, an idea like that. But look, uh, again, you know, we're looking forward to, to playing these guys. Um, we don't, you know, we don't have a huge pile of, um, you know, of, of the, we don't have a, any game experience. But we, we have a lot of individuals that have had, you know, game experience. So look, we're just trying to put together the best team we can and, and uh, you know, put a good product out in the field in, in August and, uh, and and give something. I mean, look, the, the, for the lads to be able to put on the Irish jersey, it's a fantastic honour. Um, you know, and for us to coach him, it's huge, it's fantastic. Um, uh, and I think, look, it's going to be enjoyable. And um, it's a start, hopefully, of a long journey for the under-19 guys, you know, to um, over the next few years to get some games and, and, and get to represent our country. That's it. And it's an exciting time to be a young sort of football fan growing up. You know, again, like you just said, they're getting a chance to put on a green jersey and represent your country. I think it's, um, it's a great, uh, I think it is something that hopefully gets pushed a little bit more in the years to come because especially with yourself at the front, you know, it, it should be something that um, would definitely be a positive going forward, you know. Hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, to, to have that opportunity in any sport is, is, is you know, is a huge thing to happen. Um, and, and look, you know, I suppose to get into our sport at, with youth football at 15 and have an opportunity to go straight in, into a, a, a country level thing, is, you know, is, is also fantastic. So, I mean, you could have guys there with at 16 years of age or 15 years of age joining our squad um, and in like they could be playing for the country for, for the next 10, 15 years between the the, the 19th and the seniors, you know, which is which is fantastic. And it, it's only going to make the national teams better and it's going to make the club teams better because hopefully, you know, what they learn from the national teams, whether it's under 19 and seniors, they take back to their clubs and, you know, they help the clubs grow and, and that just solidifies how good the sport is is growing in Ireland and, and look it has been it has been a very good couple of years I think for AFI and um, and and I think that you know it's going from strength to strength from a from a you know a, a football volume of games and quality game that's it yeah and we're, we're hoping to add to that uh, at the end of August this year um, you can buy tickets online uh, for anybody interested the whole event is actually a three game event which I think is pretty cool yeah. Uh, all at Energy a Park on a Friday, the twenty fourth. Is it the twenty fifth of August? Friday, twenty fifth of August. Um, the noon game is between two high school teams. Actually, no, it's between a high school team from Pennsylvania and the NFL Academy. Yeah, the NFL Academy. Uh, you have two uh, high school teams playing against each other. Half three. I believe one's from Tennessee and is it New York or New Jersey. Another one's like New Jersey. Yeah. Should have the names of the teams up here, up here really, shouldn't I? <laughs> And then we have a seven o'clock kickoff community school in Naples from Florida taking on the AFI Irish Wolfhounds under 20s program. Uh, you can get tickets online at globalfootball.com forward slash Ireland 2023 slash tickets. Uh, I think tickets are around 20 euro each. So again, considering you're getting three games out of it, you're getting roughly is roughly nine, 10 hours of football for 20 euro. Yeah. That's a good deal. Pretty, pretty good bang for your buck there. So, um, good that's it. Make sure you get down, support your national team. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed we get um, get a good competitive game. Obviously, hoping for a win. And at, le- at the end of the day, we can get some good uh, good reps on the field for these guys, which yourself at the, ha- at the helm coach, uh, you know, should be a good day out altogether. So yeah, get yourself down. Get yourself down, support the national team. And yeah, coach, thanks so much for coming on. I uh, really appreciate Thank you. Yeah, and come here, boy. Obviously, it's very busy period for you, so I appreciate you taking the time here. So, thank you so much.